Hello, everybody. Welcome to Big Nerd Valley. This is episode 7. You know, we're up here. We're getting it. Talking to the microphone. You guys are listening. Everything's good. The podcast with no purpose. It's been a great week. You know, it's been a it's been a great time. There have been some bad things happening around the world, but we're not going to worry about that cuz this is a place of peace. We don't worry about the bad stuff here. We're here to calm down. We're here to chill, you know. Maybe listen to some tunes at some point. But overall, we're just we're we're here, you know. We're here. And that is all that matters at this moment right now. All right? We can't we can't be we can't be just focusing on the bad, all right? We need we need to live our lives. Yeah, man. You know, as I do at the start of every episode, I'm going to, you know, fucking talk about where you can watch my podcast, how you can watch my podcast, how you can support me. Um so, if you want to listen to your, if you, if you want to listen to Big Nerd Valley on any platform, go to anchor.fm slash Big Nerd Valley. And, uh, hold on. I'm so unprepared. Uh, we, we don't need to worry about it. All right. All right. So, go to anchor.fm slash Big Nerd Valley. Click on listen in your favorite app. And there'll be a list of apps you can listen to the podcast on. And if you don't see your preferred app, you click request it. And then you can request your favorite app. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you want to support the podcast with a monthly donation, uh, just go to anchor.fm slash Big Nerd Valley. Click support this podcast. You can donate 99 cents a month, four ninety nine a month, or nine ninety nine a month. It's all your choice. You can also just not donate at all. Again, it's all your choice. If you don't want to donate and you just want to listen to the podcast, I understand. If you do want to donate, all the money goes to all the money goes towards upgrading this setup. You know, getting the podcast to the best quality I can. But yeah, man, that's that. At the end of this episode, uh the last thing I'm going to talk about is my full end game review. I went to go see it the day, I I went to go see it on the 26th, I yeah, on the 26th at 11.40pm. It was great, alright, I'm just gonna say right now, I absolutely loved it, it was an awesome experience, but my full review will be the last thing I talk about in in this episode, mainly because I want to avoid spoiling, spoiling it for anybody. So, when it gets to that point, I'll say a warning, so that if you haven't seen the movie, you can just stop watching at that point. That's good? That's good. I believe so. Now, yesterday, a trailer, a movie trailer, came out for a movie that I don't know if anyone is excited for. Uh, you know, they may be. Especially now that uh, Jim Carrey is a part of it. It is the Sonic movie, alright? The Sonic live action absolute thriller, you know? Sonic the Hedgehog 2019. I haven't seen the trailer yet. I've seen pictures of Sonic, like the the live action Sonic. And let me tell you, it's scary, alright? Man, I don't know. He looks like if Chucky grew out his hair and dyed it blue. I don't know, dude. We're about to watch this movie trailer right here, though. Because I haven't seen it, and I'm interested. Especially, like... Because me, personally, I'm excited for Detective Pikachu. I, I thought the trailer looked really funny. It didn't bother me that it was, like, Pikachu talking. A lot of people got bothered by that. But me, personally, I'm... I thought it was... I thought it looked funny. You know, Ryan Reynolds is a funny man. And in the movie, he's a funny little creature. So, we're going to watch the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer together. And we'll see what I think. This is my first time watching it. Uh, yeah, man. The time is now. Hopefully that's not too loud. Going to full screen this. Ooh. 
great. They got the Sonic rings around the Paramount logo. Gotta go fast. Oh no. It's just so strange looking. Like, the effects and stuff of the explosions are looking pretty, pretty cool, but like... It's strange. Oh, there's Jim Carrey. Are you in charge here? Yes, I am. Nope! I'm wrong. I'm in charge! Allow me to clarify. In a sequentially ranked hierarchy based on level of critical importance, the disparity between us is too vast to quantify. Agent Stone? The doctor thinks you're basic. Listen, pal, I don't know if you realize who- I'm sorry, Major, what was your name? Benny? Nobody cares! God. SFPD! Uh... Meow? <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, pal, I want answers. Basically, it looks like I'm gonna have to save your planet. It's real weird seeing Sonic, like, rolling on a real, actual street. Whatever this creature is, our job is to secure it, neutralize it, see what makes it tick. I forgot what the villain's name is. I don't know why I can't remember it. Something Eggman. Something like that. Something that has to do with eggs. Stay in there and be quiet. How much longer? I can't breathe in here. Do you have your child in that bay? No. I mean, yes, it's a child, but it's not mine. It's not your child. Smells like body spraying an old ham sandwich. Uh, I, I don't know. That's all I can say about it, you know? I just, I don't know. I think they could have done better with the actual look of Sonic. But, who knows? It might be good. It might be quality. Uh, we can't really tell by just watching the trailer. We gotta watch the actual movie when it comes out, which I believe is sometime November. <coughs> But other than that, I am excited for Detective Peach, P P Pikachu. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, man, Detective Pikachu looks pretty good. Recently, I've been... See, usually when I go to sleep, you know, I listen to some music or I have YouTube playing in the background. Sometimes it doesn't work because I end up too focused on the music or like... If I'm watching a video, I get too invested into the video and then can't fall asleep. So recently, I, I, I've been watching the doc, I, I guess it's a documentary. Um, it, it's a fucking documentary. Fucking Our Planet on Netflix. And the narrator is the same guy who narrated all those, like, like, all those, like, biomes videos that you probably had to watch in middle school. Same dude, same, like, British accent and everything. He might be Australian. I don't fucking know. I'm not an expert in accents, all right? It's it's pretty interesting, though. Uh, And it's really easy to fall asleep to, man. I'm Let me tell you. Because that fucking narrator, he has such a calm voice. You know, there's animal sounds happening. There's fucking calm-ass music. It's great to sleep to, you know? And for that, I, I give it five stars. You know, if I can fall asleep that easily to it, we're good. Everything's fine. It's all Gucci. We're just, you know, we're good. All right? Our planet. If you haven't seen it and, you know, you're interested in, like, nature type shit, you should watch it. It's actually pretty interesting when you pay attention to it. One thing that really bothers me, though, is when I see, like, footage of monkeys. 
and they're like doing stuff that's so close to what we do and like the way they act is exactly how we act because I know humans are like a close relative but like it still fucks with me when I see other animals doing human like things it's so strange to me and it's I feel like no one else gets as uncomfortable with that as I do because anytime I bring that up everyone just hits me with a yeah they're fucking monkeys but I'm sitting there freaking out, dude. Like, I don't trust it, all right? These monkeys are doing human shit. I'm pretty sure I said this in the last podcast, but they're doing human shit and they're gonna take over, all right? At some point, they're gonna figure out how to use guns and they're gonna be like, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, pa pow, pa pow. And it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be real bad. And I'm not fucking with that, all right? There's already a video. Of I, I don't know if you guys have seen this video, but there's this video that was on Twitter one time that I saw, and it was of this monkey in some fucking, some fucking country, you know? It looked like he was near some, like, gorilla fucking soldiers or some shit, and the monkey picks up the fucking, the monkey picks up an AK-47, and he starts shooting it and spinning around. He, you know, luckily he didn't hit anybody, but still, the fact that he picked it up and shot it is not good. That means that all other monkeys have the ability to do that, alright? I think the monkeys are gonna come after us someday, and I just, I don't fucks with it. I think we, you know, the monkeys gotta chill, and I think we need to stop teaching the monkeys shit. I just, man... You you gotta be careful with the monkeys, alright? You gotta be careful with the monkeys. Yeah, man, animals are crazy, though. Like, there's some fucking... I don't... There there was this worm in, like, the third episode of Our Planet that, like, it looks so unreal because it's so disgusting. I don't remember what the worm's called, but apparently the worm has existed since the time of the dinosaurs, and it hasn't changed at all. And the way it walks is it has these, like, mini little, like, tentacle-looking things that it walks on, and, like, the whole worm looks like a tentacle, honestly. Like, it looks like a tentacle, and it has these long-ass antennas. I don't know if they're antennas. They might not be, but they look like antennas, so I'm gonna call them antennas. Um. He, why did I say he, but fucking, the worm does this shit, so it already looks disgusting, it already looks unsettling to watch it move, and then the camera pans to this, like, bug, this, like, cockroach looking thing, probably a beetle, you know, it pans to the beetle, and then it's, dude's just like, but the way it attacks bugs is fucking basically unreal you know and then it shows a video of this worm spraying glue on the other bug and the way it looks just oh man it's so disgusting it's i don't know i don't fuck with bugs man bugs bugs like that i've had like i've had nightmares before and every nightmare that i have with this, I've had nightmares before that involve me getting followed by a big ass furry bug. And every time I have that nightmare, it's the same looking bug. And the bug that I see in my nightmare, it looks very similar to this worm, just longer. Well, not as long. The The bug in my dream is not as long as the real life worm. But still, man, I don't know how people just be being around bugs and being okay with it. Bugs fuck with me. Like, if there's a bug near me, I'm fine, but if it touches me, brother, I'm out. You know, I'm saying, uh, I'm saying prayers, and I'm flying away. Because that shit is nasty. Like, I know they're part of this earth, just like we are, but why don't they just be a part of this earth away from me? Because I'm not doing anything to them. They gotta leave me alone. I don't fuck with bugs, dude. I really don't. It's just... It's just not fun. It really is not fun. 
you know, I watched, so I've seen, um, if you haven't seen the Daredevil TV series on Netflix, uh, fucking watch that because first of all, what are you doing? All right. What the fuck are you doing? It's amazing. All right. And I just thought, I just thought I'd dedicate a few minutes to this show because it's just, it's so good. You know, I've seen the whole series maybe twice already. And I just watched the first episode again because I was like, why not? And dude, that show, it's just so perfect. You know, like the camera shots are amazing. The fucking dialogue is amazing. The acting is amazing. The fight scenes are amazing. There's like, I personally don't see anything wrong with this show. And I wish, I wish that it had more like attention. Like I wish it had more popularity than it does because it truly deserves it. And also I watched the first episode today and there's a part where they're, uh, where fucking Matt and, uh, fucking Matt and, why can't I remember? Fucking, I'm just gonna call him Nelson. Fucking, where Nelson and Murdoch are buying their office for their attorney, att- attorney thing. <clears throat> fucking, Jesus, I'm stupid. You know, they're buying their office for their fucking job, basically. And, uh, the lady that's, like, showing them the office brings up the, a thing that they called the incident. And, um, you know, they also bring up, like, New York being destroyed. And I, for some reason, I didn't notice it before. But they're literally talking about the Avengers 1, like, issue that they had like in the avengers one if you haven't seen it it's literally loki being sent down by thanos to destroy new york well technically the 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 world but like you know comic books new york so you know they started off with new york and it's just so wild how like connected everything is in the mcu the marvel cinematic universe like the the first episode in Daredevil, they literally bring up the Avengers 1 movie. Because I'm pretty sure it takes place either, or like, a year or two after after Avengers 1. Either that or it's right after Avengers 2. <clears throat> I'm honestly not sure. You could, I could probably look it up and find out, but I'm not going to do that, because that's a lot. But I, But, like... You know, back to what I was saying, Daredevil is just such an amazing show. I don't know why it's not as popular as it should be. It really, like, deserves so much recognition. It's amazing. It, it'll it get you to feel stuff, you know? You'll get connected to the characters if you haven't seen it. You know, it's wild, dude. All the fucking... All the fucking Marvel shows on Netflix are amazing. Uh, The only ones I haven't seen are Iron Fist, and I think there's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know if anyone has seen that one. I've never heard anyone talk about it. But, you know, all the ones that are in the MCU, like Daredevil, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage, they're fucking great. I actually, I haven't seen Iron Fist. Uh, That's... Iron Fist is the only one that I heard that people really just did not like. I guess uh, I guess the story was too slow or something. I never finished Jessica Jones, <clears throat> which I probably should have because I, I, I've heard Jessica Jones is one of the best ones. Also, The Punisher is also amazing. I don't know how you could dislike The Punisher series. It's It's fucking great. I need to take a sip of this water, so give me a second. That was that. That was that clean H2O. The clean H2O. You gotta stay hydrated, boys. If you're not staying hydrated, what the fuck are you doing? You're probably not watching Daredevil. If you're not staying hydrated, you're probably also not watching Daredevil. Alright? You gotta get your shit together, dude. If you're not drinking water right now, go get a fucking bottle of water and drink that shit. It's the nature juice, alright? You gotta drink it. You gotta drink that shit. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait 
until you've had enough time to take a sip of water. I'm going to keep talking about the water until you take a fucking sip. Get hydrated, all right? It helps with everything. It helps with your anxiety. Helps with paranoia. You know, it helps you stay hydrated. It helps a lot. It helps with everything. Drink your fucking water, kids. All right? If you're not drinking water, you're fucking up. You're going to die early. All right? Just drink your water. I completely lost my train of thought because I started thinking about water. I ho- I really hope my voice doesn't sound weird right now because it, it feels like... <clears throat> I don't know. Like, it feels kind of dry when I'm talking. But I'm also already so far into this recording that it's like, eh, you know? It's just like, eh. Like, what the fuck am I going to do? Eh. Eh. Man. Being hydrated really, really makes you feel hydrated, you know? It's pretty cool. But you know what's not cool? This fucking heat right now, dude. It's like... It's fucking 719 right now. It's probably like 78 degrees, but like during the day, like the actual day, it was like 86 degrees, which is absolutely stupid, and I refuse to believe that that's a real temperature. Yeah, man, it's too hot. I hate, I hate this shit, man. I wish I could live in the north during like the summer, because it still gets hot. But, like, in the north, hot is, like, 70 degrees. And I'm fine with that, you know? Like, that's that's pussy weather, all right? That's pussy-eating weather. That's the good weather. But, like, cold over there is, like, fucking cutting fucking pizza with your nipples weather. And that's not it, chief. <clears throat> Which is why... I wish I could go to the north during the summer, during the hot seasons, and come to the south, to North Carolina, during the winter. Because during the winter, you know, it gets freezing as fuck here, but I'm cool with it being freezing as fuck. I'm much better with it being freezing as fuck than hot as fuck. Because, like, when it's hot, you know, your body sweats, it's like... Your body tries to cool itself down naturally, but what's sweat gonna do? Like, what the fuck? It's literally just some fucking liquid that comes out of your body, and it's just like, we're gonna try to be cold now. And it's like, that shit's just not efficient. Literally, to get cold during the summer, you gotta, like, sit in front of a fan. You gotta fucking get naked. You know, you gotta spread your legs, pull your balls up so you have fucking space between the gooch and your ass. Dude, it's just like, man, just, it's too hot, alright? And when it's cold, it's so much easier to get warm. You just get under a blanket, you know, and if you're still cold, you put on a hoodie. And then get under the blanket, and then you're fine. It's so much easier. Also, when it's hot, when you go outside, when you want to get cold, what are you going to do? The The best you can do is fucking put water on yourself. But what if you don't want to be wet? Well, shit, you're fucked, all right? But when it's cold outside, you get a jacket, and if it's still too cold, you get a hoodie, you put it under the jacket, and if it's still too cold, you get another hoodie, put it under the hoodie that's under the jacket, and then you're fine. Alright? This is why cold weather is better than the heat. Because I don't trust people, you know? I don't trust people who love the heat. I don't trust people who just sit there in 90 degree weather and like, wow, this is the beautiful weather. This is the good weather. I'm so happy right now. It's so hot. I'm so happy right now. Shut up. Shut up. It's too goddamn hot. All right? Jesus Christ. Uh, Did the summer, the, the hot weather brings out the weirdos that fucking love the heat. And fuck, man, no. How do you like the heat? It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. 
dude. All I care about is the cold. You know, I also, my, my favorite season personally is autumn because it's like, it's not too cold. It's not too hot. And the leaves are pretty, you know, <clears throat> the, the fucking world looks pretty in autumn. It's the perfect season because you can wear a hoodie or you cannot. You get to decide. It's like changing the temperature of the AC in your car. But with nature, you can decide. That's fucking magical. When it's hot, you can't decide. You're just stuck. Like right now, it's so hot. My room is hot. And even if we turn up the AC, it's still gonna be hot in my room. <clears throat> and if it's too cold outside... You know, you can put on a bunch of thick clothing, but you might still feel uncomfortable because you're wearing too much shit. But during the autumn, or during the fall, you know, autumn, you can decide. You can decide if you want to be warm. You can decide if you want to be cold. And it's great. It's also another thing where, like, I refuse to wear shorts. So during the summer, I'm walking, ar I'm walking around and, like, 90 degree weather with black pants on, black socks, a black shirt, and sometimes, if I'm feeling real cool, a black hat. And that's just not the summer way to go. But there's nothing else I'll wear because I'm a fat fuck who's insecure and I refuse to wear colors. So, you know, it's some shit. Which is also why I love the fucking winter. Because then when it snows and I'm wearing all black, I look fucking, I, I, I don't know, it just looks cooler, alright? I don't know, dude, I, I've been talking about this for a long time, but I really do just hate the heat. I, I absolutely despise it. It's so hot, I can't, I can't do it. I miss when it wasn't this hot, because I, I physically remember when I was like 12, going outside in the summer, and the hottest it would get was like, what it is now, you know, like 85 degrees. But like this year, I'm sure the hottest it'll get is probably 100 or something there. Because I remember last year it was around 100. And that's stupid. You know, I'm tired of it. Why can't we just like flip a switch and just be like, oh, it's cold now. Because um, that would truly, it would truly be beautiful if we could just flip a switch. And then just, you know, be cold. I'm going to hit my jewel in honor of the autumn season, the fall. Let's go, boys. There we go. I've been cured. I've been cured of the brain. The brain fucking, yeah. The brain overheating. My br my brain's overheating, alright? I feel like a Florida man. My brain is overheating, and I'm getting stupid. I'm saying shit that no one cares about. I'm saying shit that even I don't care about. <sighs> Dude, I don't know, man. It's just so hot. And when it's hot, I, like, I can't think straight. Because I just feel constantly uncomfortable. And that's not good when you, like, naturally feel uncomfortable all the time. You know, because I'm always so aware of my surroundings. I'm so aware of everything that's happening in the world around me, not like the actual world. I'm so unaware of what's happening in the actual world. But like, I'm so aware of like everything in my area of fucking my area, you know, my bubble. And um so I, I just constantly feel uncomfortable. I'm always so aware of my existence. I'm constantly questioning things. And you know, when it's hot, it, it really doesn't help because then all I can focus on is how hot I am, how like much I'm sweating. And then it's just, I hate it, man. I fucking hate it. But I'm gonna stop talking about it because it's probably getting old. And I, I, I'm sorry. You know, I just hate it so much. But you know, since I've been talking so much about something I hate, let's take a moment to talk about something I love, and something that a lot of us love. And you know, if you don't love this, you're probably a psychopath, and you should, I don't know, 
I don't, I don't know what to say to you, man. You should get some help. But we really, we truly just, we truly just don't deserve dogs. You know, dogs are so humble. You know, they're so wholesome. They're so pure. You know, it, dogs really just are great. All right. I remember I actually, I was, I don't know if I should talk about this. It's kind of sad. Fuck it, I'm gonna talk about it. My first dog, you know, uh, his name was Te- his name was Teddy. I'm not sure how old I was when we got him. I was probably like, uh, fucking eight or nine or something. But, you know, his name was Teddy. He was a little Chihuahua. Chihuahuas are annoying as fuck, but man, I loved this guy. And uh, you know, we had him for a while. I think he died when I was like thirteen, maybe twelve. I'm so I'm really bad at remembering ages, so I just kind of spit out numbers and hope they're correct. But uh, you know, dogs are so nice. You know, I love dogs. And you know that dog. There was a day where I accidentally scared him because I I pet him and he didn't know I was there. And so I accidentally scared him and he turned around. He bit my nose and I had a big ass red dot on my nose for the next like two days. And, um, you know, if any other dog did that to me, I'd probably, I'd probably be pretty pissed off. But because he was Teddy, I was like upset. But I was like, you know what, you're cute. I forgive you. You know, you didn't mean it. You still love me. We still give you food. So I forgive you, alright? I shouldn't have scared you. And, uh, man. I miss that fucking dog, dude. He died on April Fool's Day. So, like, I was in middle school. You know, I come home on April Fool's Days. And and, and in middle school, you know, April Fool's Day was an actual thing. Like, uh, these days... April Fool's Day is kind of just like, oh, it's April Fool's Day, (laughs) haha, and that's it. In middle school, April Fool's Day was actually like, let's prank everybody. Like, people actually gave a shit about it. And so, since I got home, uh, you know, I used to ride the bus. My mom picked me up at the fucking bus stop. It was April Fool's Day. She told me my, our dog died. And I was like, no, he fucking didn't. It's April Fool's Day. You think I'm stupid or something? And then, you know, we drive up home. Uh, My dad tells me that he died. And I was like, no, he fucking didn't. It's April Fool's Day. And then they show me his body. And like, fuck, dude. That ain't it. Like, shit, man. What? I miss that dog so much. It was a long time ago. So I'm like fine with it. You know, I can talk about it and just be like, damn, that was a cool dog. But it was fucking sad, man. And if you've ever lost a dog, uh, you know, I understand it. I, I understand how you felt when it happened. I remember I was like, <clears throat> I was young. I didn't, I wasn't able to cry like a proper human being. So I fucking went outside. I was pacing in our driveway, fucking crying, dude. I was like singing songs and shit. Dude, that dog got me emo for a bit. But man, if you have a dog, basically what I'm trying to say is if you have a dog, cherish that boy or that girl. You got to cherish them, all right? You got to love them. You got to show them all the love you can because they deserve it. They they don't know what's happening. <clears throat> they don't really, they don't like really know what's happening around the world. You know, they're just happy to be there. They're happy to have people who care about them. Just, just enjoy their company, all right? You got to love them. They're pure, they're wholesome, and they're humble. You gotta love them. <clears throat> but yeah, man. We're 34 minutes into this podcast. So, you know, I'm guessing this podcast is gonna go on for perhaps another 15 minutes or something. But, <clears throat> before before I start what I'm about to start, after this point, if you've listened up to this point, uh, and you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, just stop listening, because there will be spoilers. Um, yeah, man, if you, if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, after this point, just stop listening, because I'm about to do my full review of Avengers Endgame. I'm not gonna go too in-depth, because I just, I have bad memory, 
you know, <laughs> so I'm not going to remember too much until I go see it again, which might be tomorrow, but, um, I will bring up some things that are spoilers. Ah, fuck. Sorry about that. Excuse moi. You know? But yeah. So after this point, there will be spoilers to Avengers Endgame. So if you haven't seen it, don't listen to the rest. Just stop listening here. And it starts now. Alright? So, Avengers Endgame. You know, I went to see it with my friend. We went to Silver Spot Cinema in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. First time ever going there. It was great because, you know, I've never been to a movie theater that was that fancy. Like, when you buy the tickets online, you pay for your seat. So, whatever seat you buy, like, whatever seat's on your ticket, that's the seat you sit at. And, um, you know, you walk in, you give the man your ticket, you go to your seat, and... I didn't even know it was going to be a fancy movie theater. And then I sat down and I literally sunk into my chair, dude. Those fucking chairs are literally couches. They're literally mini couches. And at the bottom, like the the very front row seats of the movie theater are actual couches. And also every seat has like a little table that you can move so you can get out and then you can move in front of you so you can eat. And every little table has a QR code. And you scan the QR code with your phone. And then after you scan it, you get the app. And you can literally fucking order food to your seat at the movies. What is that? I've never... I didn't even know that existed. But man, it was perfect, alright? It was great because it was my first time going to a really nice movie theater. Uh, Well, a fancy movie theater. You know, I've been to nice movie theaters, just not something like that. And seeing a movie that I was extremely excited for. So me and my best friend, we went there. 11.40 p.m. We got out at around 4 a.m. Fuck, dude, it was great. <laughs> so, you know, the movie starts off. It, um... It starts off kind of slow, like the first hour is a little slow. I personally didn't find it that slow. I felt like it was a good introduction back into how the world has been. Uh, You know, you can see that all the characters are devastated. You can see how upset they are. And then Captain Marvel gets, uh, you know, she's flying around. Iron Man and Nebula are stuck in space, and Captain Marvel, she stumbles into them, and she takes them back to the Avengers building, because, you know, she's strong as fuck, she can just carry a fucking spaceship, because, you know, she just can. But yeah, so she takes Iron Man down, and this is probably at, like, minute 10 of the movie or something, and so, you know, they take Iron Man down. Uh, they meet up with each other. And when Iron Man steps out of the spaceship, you know, he, I I believe he was talking, he goes up to Captain America, and literally the first thing he says when he comes out is, I couldn't save the kid. And when he said that line, I was absolutely just tearing up, man. It was so, like, I felt, you know, because Spider-Man is just, he, I look up to Spider-Man, personally, like, he's just such a great, a great superhero, you know, his personality is, uh, is just great, and it's so easy to relate to him, so seeing him die in Infinity War was one of the saddest things I've ever seen, in my opinion, just because of how much it, like, had an effect on me, and, um, you know, so Iron Man, He goes up to Captain America and he says, I couldn't save the kid. And I just, I couldn't handle it, dude. I was tearing up. I was just sad. Yeah, man. And so, you know, afterwards, Captain America, or fucking Captain Marvel goes into the building. I actually don't know if this is after they save Iron Man or if it was before. 
they're both very early into the movie, so I'm, I can't completely remember which happened first. But Captain Marvel, you know, in the scene that we that I listened to in one of my other episodes where Captain Marvel walked in and she's like, it's because you didn't have me. And then, you know, Cat, fucking Captain America is like, let's go get this son of a bitch. And, you know, they they go try to fight Thanos. And in the movie, they it's like fucking it's probably like 20 minutes into the movie and they're already going to fight Thanos because they found his planet the garden and um it's crazy because they all go up they start attacking him in his building and Thanos is already extremely worn out because he used the stones to destroy the stones which um it, it it caused a lot of damage to his body, so he, he couldn't really fight back because of how worn out he was and how destroyed his body was. And so, you know, they're all beating the fuck out of him. And then he, he told them what he did with the stones. He tells them that he destroyed them. And Thor is pissed off, you know, because he got so close to th- killing Thanos, but he didn't, like, go for the head in Infinity War. So he's just so pissed off that he literally slices Thanos' head off and he kills him. And fucking, I think it was Groot. No, it wasn't Groot. Fucking Rocket. Like, it's just like, what what are you doing, man? Why'd you do that? He's like, I went for the head. And that scene was really just, you know, you could just, you could feel how upset Thor was that he didn't kill him in the first place. You could feel like, you could feel, overall, basically through the entire movie, you could truly feel like the emotions that the actors were attempting to portray with their character. And it was just, honestly, in my opinion, it was a masterpiece. Like, to me, personally, like, 100% my opinion, I thought it was one of the best movies that I have ever seen. I've never had a movie, I've never seen a movie that was, like, that long, like, three hours long, that, like, made me feel several emotions throughout the entire movie. Like, there was not a single moment in the movie where I felt bored. There wasn't a single moment in the movie where I felt like I wasn't being entertained. It was just, it was a masterpiece to me. I absolutely just love it, and I might go see it tomorrow, again, because my parents haven't seen it, but they have seen Infinity War, and I want them to go see it. Also, I just want to see it again, because I just, oh, fuck, dude. But yeah, man, it was a masterpiece. The one thing that I think they could have done better is around maybe 25 minutes into the movie, you know, Captain America says something. So okay, so before I get into that, so Ant Man in the Ant Man movie in the post credit scene, he got stuck inside the quantum realm because everyone got fucking disintegrated while he was in there. There so there was nobody to press the press the button. And so in Endgame, um, the van in which the quantum thing is in, I don't remember what it's called. There's a there's a rat that is walking around on the fucking operating thing and the rat steps on a button that then releases Ant-Man from the quantum realm five years after the events. So he comes out and, you know, he's looking around as you can you can see it in the trailer. He's walking around uh, fucking just trying to figure out what the fuck is happening because he actually said that those five years that passed to him felt like five hours because time works differently there. So he comes up with an idea. Uh, he goes to the Avengers building. He comes up with the idea that, you know, since time works differently in the quantum realm, they could probably use it to time travel if they, they could probably figure it out. And so this is all five years after they killed Thanos and everything. So Iron Man is living in a lo- in in like a log cabin type thing. It's not a log cabin. He's just living in a house. Like 
deep in the kind of deep in the woods uh near like a a lake or something and he actually has a daughter i don't remember what the daughter's name is but he has a daughter and so all the avengers they go to they go to tony's house and they propose to him that he like they they propose the idea of the time machine thing and he says no because he just doesn't want to risk losing his daughter and you know that's understandable and so captain america then i believe looks at i don't know if it was black widow or ant man probably both of them she's like we're get, we're just going to need a bigger brain so this is like 25 minutes into the movie or so and it just cuts to a scene with the hulk and it's not only the hulk it's professor hulk so you know fucking bruce has figured out how to become the hulk and not be completely upset he figured out that the the way to do it was just to come to terms with it you know come to terms with the hulk and kind of act as a fucking i don't remember what it's called but like those animal relationships where fucking both species are being benefited it kind of works like that they just need to support each other in a way they need to they they just need to accept each other you know the hulk and bruce just need to accept each other and then it works and the one thing i thought that they could have done better with that is actually you know show that process happening or, or at least a little bit of it because all they did was they had bruce explain how he figured it out rather than you know showing anything that showed how he figured it out but yeah man so you know they get the hulk they try to build a time machine meanwhile tony stark is at home and they got him thinking about it they got him thinking about the idea and so tony is coming up with different like algorithms you know he's coming up with different things and while he's doing that, he's not really thinking much of it because he's like, this just isn't going to work. And suddenly one of the things that he tries works. And, you know, that leads him to go to the Avengers building and help them out. And then they they then time travel to different points in time where each of them go with a partner to retrieve one of the stones before it was ever taken. That way they can bring it back to their timeline and use it to bring back the other half of the universe. Because the way the time travel works in Endgame is if you change the past, it doesn't change the future. When you change the past, it just creates an alternate timeline. So it, it's it, that's just how it works. I one thing that I really did like about the movie is that they had a lot of like time travel. They had a lot of like complicated concepts, but for the most part, they had ways of like, you know, they had ways of explaining how it worked. Like there wasn't too many plot holes in it. You know, like there wasn't too many mistakes. Like there's a lot of movies and stuff where when they deal with time travel they end up leaving plot holes because they don't completely explain how it would work properly. But yeah, um, it was, it was phenomenal, dude. I never use that word ever, but it was absolutely fucking phenomenal. They fucking, you know, they, they introduced rescue, which is, you know, Tony Stark's wife just in her fucking, iron man suit it's it's rescue in her rescue suit and during the last fight scene towards the end of the movie it's it's awesome dude it's so cool seeing rescue and iron man fighting like with their backs together and just shooting at a bunch of aliens it was great it was the fight was amazing but yeah so you know they go through their whole time travel thing they get all the stones and iron man iron man makes a glove you know uh hulk snaps brings back half the universe it actually worked it damaged hulk a lot but it actually brought back half of the universe and so thanos he figures out how to go into their timeline because uh so i'm i i don't really want to get into that part because that part just i don't know i just don't feel like explaining that much but basically thanos ends up in their timeline he doesn't truly he doesn't actually know like 
Because since he's a completely different Thanos than the one that, you know, snapped his fingers, he he doesn't even, like, that Thanos has never actually done it. So this is his first time ever actually going for the stones. And, you know, Thanos is there, and he starts fighting the ones that are there, the people that are there. And it's crazy, because, you know, he beats he beats all of them to, like, a point where it's like, you know, they're actually getting fucked up. And uh, it gets to a scene where Captain America is looking at Thanos, and it looks like there's no hope, you know? Like, it looks like there's not much to fucking hope for. And, uh, dude, thinking about this scene is just crazy. So, as I said before, you know, the Hulk snapped his fingers, and everyone came back. So, Captain America's sitting there, Thanos thinks he won, because... There's just very few of very few people fighting him, and he's beat the shit out of him. But suddenly, Doctor Strange starts opening portals and teleporting all the other heroes, like ever, into the fight. And fuck, dude, when I saw all the, when I saw all the heroes coming through the portals and like getting ready to fight, it was so. Oh, man. For me, it was so emotional because I was just like, dude, I don't know, man. I, I'm i I'm a very emotional person when it comes to watching movies. So, like, I cry very easily. I cry to sad moments. I cry to moments that are extremely happy. And when I saw all those, like, superheroes coming and ready to fight, dude, I fucking cried, man. I was like, fuck, dude, this is amazing. Especially when I saw Spider-Man walking through. Dude, I was fucking out, man. Shit. There was a lot of cool scenes during that fight scene as well. You know, the, um, there was a part where Scarlet Witch, you can tell how pissed she is that Thanos took Vision away from her. And she, holy fuck, dude, she starts using her powers, basically ripping Thanos apart. She's not the one that defeats him, but it was awesome seeing her just, like, absolutely destroy this big-ass man. It was perfect, dude. Um, you know, I'm gonna... S I, w one thing I did like, actually, is I've said this before. I remember I said that I want... I really hope Captain Marvel doesn't have the biggest role. And she didn't. She was only in the movie for probably a total of 15 minutes or so. And... You know, when she joined the big ending fight, she, the biggest thing she did was she walked up, or she flew up and, like, destroyed the entire ship that Thanos brought, and, um, you know, that's all she did, and then she didn't really do much else, and I was very glad that they didn't make Captain Marvel the, like, biggest role. Like, I'm glad they didn't make her the one that does everything. But yeah, so skipping to the complete end of the movie. This part was so, it was just so insane. So, Thanos manages to get the glove, the glove, um, though he's using a different glove, I believe. I believe he's using the actual fucking, I don't actually remember, I think he's using the Iron Man glove, the one that Iron Man created to hold the gems, and he's, he gets all the stones, and fucking iron man goes up to him and attacks and uh you know thanos snaps but then nothing happens and this is where shit gets fucking crazy you know thanos snaps nothing happens and then iron man pulls out his hand and he has the stone like he has the gauntlet with the stones on it and then he snaps and like the entirety of Thanos' army and Thanos fades away. And it was so fucking cool. Like, Iron Man just absolutely finessed Thanos. And it was amazing. But afterwards, you know, it's all happy. They killed the entire army of Thanos. It was great. The blast from the snap. The power of the stones was just too much for Iron Man. So he ended up collapsing. And... He basically died, you know, and it was one of the saddest deaths I've ever seen um, because Spider-Man was there and he was talking to Tony 
he was apologizing to him. He was saying, like, I'm sorry, Mr. Stark, and shit like that. And Iron Man died in front of him. And that was so, just so sad to me, dude. I couldn't stop crying for, like, the next 15 minutes because it was just so much. I, it was, like, if you've seen the movie, you probably know what I'm talking about. But it was such an emotional scene. Um, man. And then afterwards, you know, they have to take all the stones back to the time where they got them from so that it doesn't fuck anything up and you know Captain America is the one in charge of taking them all back and so they send Captain America back in time so that he can take all the stones back but when Captain America comes back he is probably like 70 years old or something and it is because he stayed back uh, to live his life with Peggy you know he he stayed back to live his life to live a full life that he never lived. Like he did exactly what he's always wanted. And it's awesome because he did all. He was there for like many, many years. But for everyone else, it was only five seconds. So, you know, I I know I'm very bad at explaining things. I know that a lot of the stuff I said you probably didn't understand. Because I'm just, I'm just really bad at explaining things. But overall... I just want to say that if you if you have seen Endgame you know I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I do because when I saw Endgame I came out of the movie theater just so just so excited so happy I'm so ready for Spider-Man Far From Home I have no idea how that's going to go I also find it insane that because this movie, because like most of Endgame takes place five years after the initial snap, you know, if if Spider-Man had been alive, uh, he would be around like 19 years old. But because he was disintegrated, he didn't age at all. So, you know, I wonder how the movie would have been if he never died and he ended up being 19. But we'll never know. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see where the Avengers go. I'm really excited for Far From Home. Um, can't wait. I think that comes out in July, so like two months or something. So yeah, man, there's a lot. There's a lot coming from the MCU. I can't wait. I can't. I I absolutely can't wait. You know, because you know they have Scarlet Witch. They have Cat. Well, actually, they don't have Captain America. So basically, the people that are out of the Avengers right now are Captain America, Iron Man, and Black Widow. I forgot to explain the Black Widow thing, so I'm going to explain that real quick. When they were getting the Soul Stone, if you remember in Infinity War, uh, when Thanos was trying to get the Soul Stone, it required a sacrifice for the one thing he loved, which was Gamora. So he, you know, he throws Gamora off the cliff. So, Black Widow and Hawkeye were the ones that went to get the Soul Stone, and when they heard what they had to do... They were both fighting each other. They started fighting each other because they both wanted to sacrifice themselves. Black Widow felt like she should be the one that sacrifices herself because she, I don't know, she doesn't feel as useful as everyone else. And the same with Hawkeye. He feels like he's not as important, so he wants to sacrifice himself. And they continue fighting, you know. It gets really, like, kind of emotional because they both just really want to die. And, um... It ends up being Black Widow. She ends up tricking Hawkeye and then like, yeah, man. So she ended up sacrificing her to for the Soul Stone. So the Avengers that are no longer going to be in the Avengers are Captain America, Iron Man, and Black Widow. I am a little confused, though, because there is going to be a Black Widow movie that is coming out. Uh, I'm not sure when it's coming out, but I'm pretty sure they've got the casting and everything done for that. So it's like, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's been confirmed. So I don't know if they're going to do like an origin story or if they're going to like bring her back and show how they bring her back. I'm guessing it's going to be an origin story. Um, I feel like that would make sense. I don't think we've gotten one of those for Black Widow yet. I don't know, man. I'm looking forward. I'm just looking forward to to what the MCU is going to bring us. It's going to be great. It, I I can guarantee it's going to be a great a great time. Um Yeah, man. I don't think I, I I don't think I forgot to talk about anything I wanted to. So you know, we're 
we're almost exactly an hour into episode seven of Big Nerd Valley. Uh, so I believe this is a good time to end. I think this might be my longest episode ever, which is cool because I completely, you know, before I started recording this episode, I was literally like, oh shit, I'm supposed to do that today. Like I almost didn't because I forgot, but here we are. So this was Big Nerd Valley episode seven. Uh, usually I have the music at the end to help end it off. I just, I'm too lazy to do that right now. So. This was episode 7 of Big Nerd Valley. If you want to find other ways to listen to the podcast, go to bignerdvalley.fm slash... Or wait, no, that was completely wrong. Go to anchor.fm slash bignerdvalley and click on listen in your favorite app. And it'll bring up a list of apps for you to listen on. And if you don't see your preferred app, you can click on request it. And you can request what app you want my podcast to be available on. Also, if you want to support the podcast with a monthly donation, go to anchor.fm slash bignerdvalley, click on support this podcast, and you can you can send a monthly donation of $0.99, cents, $4.99, or $9.99. You don't have to do that. It's completely your choice. But if you want to do that, all the money goes to progressing this podcast, upgrading equipment, you know, getting better, just getting better quality. Um, maybe even getting a camera so that I can have a full-on podcast going on. But yeah, man. Big Nerd Valley Episode 7. The podcast with no purpose, kind of. Have yourselves a great life, a great day, a great decade, and a great eternity. Goodbye, everyone.